well, this was uh, Sunday night in August. We had a testimony night. She was up here with her walker, could hardly move. And she will continue to tell you the story. But uh, you know what? It's just amazing, amazing what God has done. I don't want to take away from this. But when she, after she finishes speaking, you know what? Children and our, uh, our power kids are dismissed. But let's everybody be attentive because this is just, we give God the glory. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 I can hold the microphone for the first time. <laughs> so um, we serve an amazing God. We serve a living God. We, save, we, we serve a healing God. He is faithful to his children, and his, his, um, his grace and his mercy is available to everybody. So um, for 16 and a half years, I have been in chronic pain. I was in an accident uh, 16 and a half years ago. I have injuries, pre-existing injuries to my, to my spine. Um, I've suffered for a long, long time. No pain medication ever worked. Uh, we, um, and then back in December of last year, we were coming home from the Christmas banquet here. This is so cool. I can hold a microphone. <laughs> and <laughs> so anyways, we were coming home and we were on Dixie Road. And we were on top of the 401 bridge getting ready to go over it, to go um, down the ramp, to go uh, 401 westbound. And, and I, I, I had a Honda Fit, a, a tiny itty bitty car, and an 18 wheeler came into the side of us. And he dragged us, it was like a violent earthquake. He dragged us, my car eventually turned sideways. And then I, at that point I was injured, I was slumped in my seat my hands were shaking and my head was ringing, ringing, ringing. I had had a bad concussion. And my, um, I saw the truck coming for the second hit. I can still see the lights, I can still see the truck driver. And he hit us again, um, he hit us like this, and my, the car went airborne towards the side of the bridge. And it hit the top railing and it tilted sideways going over onto the 401. And then all of a sudden, it just tilted perfectly straight and landed perfect, slid down and landed perfectly on the sidewalk. If we would have landed on Dixie Road, we would have been hit by other cars. If we would have gone under the truck, we would have been crushed. And 100%, if we would have gone over onto the 401, we would have died. And um, I know that I know that I know that I know that it was the mighty hand of God that saved us. And, and on top of all that, um, none of my airbags went off in the car. And they had been in for a recall the day before, and not one single airbag went off. And I, I had questioned God about that for a long time. Like, why didn't you let those airbags go off? Because maybe I wouldn't have got hurt so bad. And um, he, sa he said to me, because people would have credited the airbags for saving you. And it was him who saved us. So we were... The, had to go to the hospital, um, we were, I had a C collar on, they were questioning an injury in my neck and all kinds of stuff, and I'm not going to go into my full testimony, <laughs> but I've been suffering a lot. So I had injuries to my C5, C6, and then a whole bunch of injuries throughout my spine. My physiotherapist is actually here, so she can testify to all of this. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, let, I'll bring her up in a sec, is that okay? Yeah. <laughs> You're coming up. <laughs> she didn't, she was naughty. She didn't put her hand up for like first time visitors. So she needs a mug. So, <laughs> so anyways, so um, I've been suffering with injuries, um, especially to my hands. So for 10 months, I have not been able to cut food. I have not been able to open doors. I have not been able to lift a kettle. I have not been able to pour juice. I have not been able to do anything. No keys, no driving, no nothing. I've had to have my, uh, my amazing father with me, like 24-7, to look after me. And um, it's, been, it's been hard for him, but God has given us the grace. So um, two, uh, two weeks ago when Pastor Melody was preaching, um, I was so burdened to share a dream that I had in July. And in July, I had this dream. I was sitting in a congregation, and there was a man behind the pulpit, and he was hiding his, his identity to everybody else. But I knew he was Jesus, and I knew he was my husband, 
and I knew he was my wife. I, I was his wife, sorry. And um, I was sitting there, and I had a tear across the bottom of my dress from one knee to the other. And I remember feeling so unworthy and so ashamed and so embarrassed that I was sitting here, and I didn't think I, was, I should be allowed to sit in this congregation that I was in. And he stopped what he was doing immediately, and he said, my wife over there is worried about taking off her dress. And he came, and he produced. He started walking down the aisle, and he came, he came, and he sat in the row behind, beside me. And while he was walking, he looked at me with so much love, and he pulled out this thread and this needle, and it was the most beautiful thread I had ever seen. And he leaned over, and he began to stitch the tear in my dress. And the stitches were so fine and so pristine that that tear completely disappeared. And um, he restored my garment to what it was supposed to originally be. And I wanted to share that so badly. And I remember in the dream, everybody was so amazed that my Lord would stop and come and immediately attend to me. And I know that there's people here in this congregation. I know that there's people here visiting today that you feel unworthy. You feel like God won't ever deliver you. You feel like you've been going through something for so long. But I'm telling you, my Jesus is alive, and he is able, and he loves you. And so, so that was two Sundays ago. And then Monday, we went to Chris's house, and uh, we had a lovely time of sharing testimonies to a single mom and her nine-year-old daughter. And we just had a lovely, lovely time. And we went to come out to go to the elevator. And the elevator door opened. And um, I remember Brother Allen was like, happy Thanksgiving <laughs> to the people in the elevator. And he said, is there a party going on? And there was, a, uh, there was a black lady, an Indian lady, and a guy with a guitar. And we walked in. And the lady just grabbed me. And she said, sister, we, we just came from a prayer meeting and began to pray for me. And I was like, well, we just came from a night of praising the Lord all night. And I was like, and we were laughing about it. We got off the elevator and all that. On the, on the Tuesday, I woke up, and my knees were feeling better. I said, there's no pain in my knees, Lord. There's no, like, I can feel the bones, and they move. And my, my, my lower back was starting to feel a little bit better. And I, I pushed up my exercises. I said, I'm going to exercise more. And then um, by Wednesday or Thursday, something was going on in my arms. And I could not feel my arms. They were like they were dead, like they were somebody else's arms. And I was having excruciating pain up my right side into my neck. And I come into physio for an emergency leg appointment. And I know Cecilia was very concerned about me. And I didn't know what was going on. And I was actually terrified. And she, she worked on me for a long time. And... Um, she said, uh, what was it? She said not to exercise too much, not to overdo it. And then the Friday morning I got up and I said, you know what? I said, forget this. I'm like, this body has to come under subjugation to the power of the cross. I said, by his stripes, I am healed. You know, um, you bore my infirmities and my sicknesses on that cross. You have good plans for me. You have a race for me to run and I'm going to run it. So I went downstairs, and I said, you know what? I need to dust. I don't know how I'm going to do this. I'm going to dust a little bit at a time. And I was sitting there. I took a break because it's very hard for me and at, at that time. And I said to the Lord, I was looking down at my arms, and I said, Lord, what is going on with these arms? And he said two words to me, and I, I didn't know what they were. And he said, hard wire reset. And I sat there, I'm like, okay, I'll ask Google, because I don't know what hardwire reset means. So I typed in hardwire reset definition. And what popped up on my phone immediately was a factory reset, also known as a master reset, is a software restore of an electronic device to its original system state by erasing all of the information stored on the device in an attempt to restore the device to its original manufacturer settings. <laughs> Doing so will effectively erase all of the data, settings, and applications that were previously on the device. This is often done to fix an issue with a de device, but it could also be done to restore the device to its original settings. <laughs> 
I said, I said, Lord, I receive this word for me, but I receive it for your church. Because I don't want this just to be about me, because it's not about me, it's all about him. But I want to see all of you healed with all my heart, and he wants it even more. So um, we went through the day, all of that. Um, Saturday, we went to Brother Allen and Sister Andrew's house to worship. And I was telling them all about this, and I said, something has changed. Like, something has changed. I feel something different going on in the spiritual realm. I feel something different going on in my body. And I said, I don't think I'm going to need this walker much longer. I don't know. I just had this feeling. And if you know me from all the times I've testified before, I've always said that no matter what circumstance you're in, pain, whatever it is, or whatever hardship, we need to be out there and use the pain. Like, if, you're, if you have to go to the doctors, tell somebody about Jesus in the doctor's office. If, you know, always, your mouth can always be praising Jesus no matter what you're going through. Because that's what we're here for. And God will look after the rest. He'll look after us. He'll provide for all our needs. So on Saturday, yeah, we went, we worshipped. I shared that. And um, I came home. Sunday morning, I woke up. From the time I woke up Sunday morning, I was crying. And I don't know why I'm crying. And I'm an intercessor, right? I feel things. And, and I know, like, God will show me what to pray for for other people. But from 4.30 in the morning, I just had tears running down my face. I did not know why. And I came here, and then I thought maybe it was for a sister who had come up to the altar. I didn't know. But I sat back there. And um, at the end of service, we were just worshiping. And I love worshiping the Lord. Like, I wake up with a new song every day. I'm singing all day long from the time I wake up. And um, I was back there worshiping, and I just had my hands out praising Jesus and thanking him. And the power of God fell down on me. And I was shaking and shaking and shaking and shaking and shaking, and I didn't know what else was going on. And my dad was there. My dad, my dad was wondering to himself, is she going to fall? Is she going to hit her head? I don't know what I'm supposed to do. And then all of a sudden, you guys started singing, I love you, Lord. And that's my song with the Lord since I got saved. When I was unable to pray because I was so sad, because I was so depressed, because I was so angry, whatever it was, those, that was my song of praise to him. And I don't know how long I was back there, but the, you, when that song came on, my legs just brought me all the way to the front. But I knew I was healed back there. No, and I love you guys. I absolutely love you guys. But it, a pastor didn't have to pray for me. A man didn't have to pray for me. A woman didn't need to pray for me. I just needed to be in the presence of Jesus. And in this place, you know, we have to always keep our eyes on the Lord. It's all about him all the time. And we have these wonderful, wonderful pastors. I love them with all my heart to guide us. But we have to look at Jesus. And I came running up here and I praised him. And all this week, I have not been able to stop telling people. I witnessed in Food Basics. I had a lady singing, I love you, Lord, standing there with me. I, my physio team, they were crying. <laughs> The Bible says, everywhere I go, I just can't stop telling people. I got to go downtown on Thursday. I took a subway. I took a streetcar. I took a bus. <laughs> you know, I just, I, I feel like, I feel like 16 and a half years ago, I had died. 11 years ago, when I accepted Christ, I came back to life. But my full life has been restored. So it's like... I, I keep saying, okay, Lord, you're going to have to give me a car. I need a car because I need to go places. I need a job because I, no, I have no experience for the last 16 years. I don't even know how to apply. But I said, Lord, I want something in ministry, but I'll take anything <laughs> if you want. But, like, he's just so faithful. And it's not anything that I did. It's just his mercy. So I just wanted to share that and just encourage you. And I know we have a lot of visitors here today. And just tell people. Jesus loves you. He absolutely loves you. Okay? I'd like to have the uh, physiotherapist just come and maybe you can tell us uh, the pre and post of all this. Just let us know what was she feeling before she actually... Can we do that? Now, I've never met you before. Uh, what, what is your name? 
Is Celia? Yes. God bless yes, you, Celia. I'm from Milton. You're from Milton also. Well, we already got something in common. Why don't you, do you just, are you used to holding a mic? Not really. Not really? <laughs> Can you tell us what was your situation before all this? Just give us a... Okay, of course. Uh, <laughs> so, Nicole, she's been my patient for probably a year. Yeah, well, right? Uh, and maybe what I, I want to start, actually. We are both believers. Both of us. And uh, I'm dealing with car accident, car accident patients for a long time. So when I met her, she had a chronic pain. She had difficulty moving. She had difficulty with her bus. There was a weakness in her legs. She was assessed by the doctors. And we were heading to a chronic pain facility when the only option for her was let's teach her how to manage pain at this point because we don't really have any solution. Also, Nicole, the recent, uh, do you want me to talk about your spinal? Yes. <laughs> MRI. Yeah. So her recent MRIs were showing that uh, there are multiple nerve impingements throughout her spine, which we see with patients. However, uh, her physical presentation was that we knew that it's going to be a long road for Nicole to recover, and it takes a lot of stamina. But there is also weakness that sometimes it's very difficult to get over and to get patients better, especially when they hit certain age or when they go from multiple injuries. Like in her case, it was two different car accidents. We had our spiritual talks as well. <laughs> and that day when she came to talk me, she mentioned to talk to me, she mentioned, oh, I don't feel pain in my legs anymore. Cecilia, I had this encounter with two people on the elevator. I don't know what it means, but uh, somebody told me just pray, right? And when I was working on her, sometimes I was thinking, oh God, help me. If I can heal with my hands, I want to help her as well. Um, but I was thinking, you know, where is that strength? We need that inner strength, right? And eventually, um, when she came for a second appointment, no, that was the first appointment, lots of pain on her hands. When I feel with my hands, I, I do a lot of manual therapy. So I was working with her and I know the areas of inflammation and swelling when the tissue doesn't present what normal tissue would present. So I was working with her that day. I was very constant because the pain was going to both arms, so which indicates there are spinal issues. Everything was indication of the neural tissue impingement. She went home, and I'm coming there. <laughs> that was on Monday, right? <laughs> and the chiropractor that we are working with, he's coming and the front office person, she's coming and like, Nicole is dancing today. Are you kidding me, right? <laughs> no, she's dancing. There is no walker, <laughs> right? <laughs> there is no walker. And I'm like, oh, Jesus. The day before, I'm going through my own personal issues. I was sitting on the stairs crying myself. I had a reason. I was thinking I need miracle in my life. On Monday, she's coming. She's my miracle, right? <laughs> so I was just so happy she came. We gave each other a hug, and she's being good. She is strong. And when I touch with my hands, her arms, her legs, I don't feel what I was feeling before. Okay? So I'm just so happy for her. But for me, it's just Jesus is there. <laughs> and you guys need to open your hearts and just believe it, and it's going to happen for every one of you. Can I share one more thing? So I just wanted to share one more thing. About a month ago, I had to go to the Hamilton McMaster Pain Clinic, and I spent a day with the specialist there, and the doctor there told me I would have problems for the next 40 to 50 years, like that there was no hope. And he had advised me get a lawyer, because I'm going to suffer and I need to provide for myself. And then the other good news, I lost 14 pounds, too. <laughs> I'm done now. Okay. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> what, a, what a blessing you are. Like, I, I have no words. Look, she's running. Look at, I can't. But, you, but you know, you know, I, I, the amazing thing, Nicole, is this. And this is, I think, a, the, the life lesson here. There's a life lesson here. We know God can heal, but you see, with Nicole, she was praising God even when she was in despair, in pain, 
all kinds of hardship and heartache, she was still able to praise the Lord through it all. And I think that has a lot to do with it, Nicole. That's why the Bible says to give thanks in all things and for things to praise Him. So.